Hey there, my name is Chuck Black and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be doing a painting that's going to focus mainly on the clouds. And I'm going to show you how I do those bright, brilliant clouds. They're going to be very colorful and beautiful. So if you'd like to join us, welcome. We're going to be using golden fluid acrylics on a 16 by 20 inch stretch canvas. Before I get started, I'd just like to mention if you don't know or you haven't already, I give away a free hand signed art print every week to one of my email subscribers. And all you have to do to enter for a chance at winning each week is just click this card right here and enter your name and email address after following the link. All right, and the last thing that I want to mention is the paintings that I do on these videos I auction off through my eBay store. So if you're interested maybe in the painting we're doing today or one of the paintings I've done recently, follow the link in the description below and you'll be able to see what's available. So if you'd like to support what I'm doing, please check them out. All right, thanks guys so much for your time. And remember, if you like this video, please like and share. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get started on our painting. Okay, so the first thing you can see I've done is I've got a line across here and I've used a T and I just wanted to establish a horizon. And we want it to be nice and straight. So I've just gone across with a pencil just so that I have to have a good reference. And the colors that we're using today are primer yellow, titanium white, carbon black, cerulean blue, quinacridone red, and cad red. And I'll have those colors in the description below. And the brushes that I'm gonna start with, and I've used these a lot in the past videos, is this one's called a round blender, this one's called a scrumbling brush. They're just round, very round brushes go back and forth, they really don't change in any direction. And they're really good to start out with, that's what I like to do is just kind of work in circle motions and get the base of, of everything established and then you can use different brushes to detail. So I like to start with this brush and I'm going to dip it, I've got a cup of water over here. And we're only going to be using water today to mix with our paints. And I'm going to pick up some white. And you know actually Let's grab, this is just a, a good, good sized round brush. This is number six. I'll get a small sketch and I'm just gonna dip some black and I'm gonna take some white. We're gonna make a lighter gray. And let's just sketch, let's go even lighter. You don't want to overpower this paint that's about to go over the top too much. See, I have kind of some light paint. We can cover it up too. We're going to have great big clouds. And then this one's going to be further away. Maybe there's something way out here. And then we might have maybe a different, maybe way up higher, we've got some different clouds. They're gonna be more wispy. Kind of coming across. And by doing a sketch like this, it's really gonna help you visualize before you're laying paint down. But keep it light so it's not too hard to cover that up because we're gonna to wanna to cover most of that up. And then the bottom of our cloud is going to come down right here. Maybe there's going to be some light shining through underneath. And we might do something cool back here. We might put, maybe we've got some lightning that's going to be back here. And even though This is going to be a lot darker than what it will be and we're, we're kind of making a mess. It's just going to give us that visualization as we're looking through everything else. We can just kind of picture that this is going to be here and that's really going to help you get everything. So really put this in full detail. Get everything that you want. Just get the indication that it's going to be there on the canvas and it, it helps me all the time when I'm thinking of what to do next. Okay, and then we're gonna have, this is gonna be water down here. We're gonna have some shore that kind of comes out. This will be water through here. Maybe something over here. 
and our horizon. We're going to have trees along here. Let's just get something on there to represent that. Again, this little bit of texture going up and down just kind of gives us that visual that it's going to be rough. There's going to be treetops and dead trees, just snags. We're just kind of get that on there. Then let's even do a little detail down in our foreground. We're going to have some bigger trees, maybe right through here. Maybe they'll kind of go up high. You can put them wherever you would like. But we're going to have our shore. That shore is going to come right through here. And I think that other shore might be a little higher. Maybe over here more. All right. I'm going to wash that brush. And I'm going to go back to the white paint on our round blender brush. I'm going to get white where we want the highlights to be. Now when the sun's coming, we want the sun coming across here and it's going to be illuminating everything on the picture. So when it's coming to the clouds, it's going to hit right about here. We're just going to get some white paint on there, pretty thick, so we can blend it. And then right away I'm going to grab some primary yellow, just a little bit mixed with that white on my brush. So it's not too bright, not overly saturated just starts to get some color on there. It might not be the color of our finished product, but it's getting us one step closer. And so we just wanna keep taking baby steps towards the finish. So I'm gonna wash that. Wash that brush. Now I'm gonna pick up a little cad red and more of that yellow. I'm gonna kinda of sweep through all this white and black mixed together, so it's kind of gray. We're going to pick up a little more cad red. This will be just a muted gold color. Maybe kind of like raw sienna. Could probably use that. Helps me a lot mixing the colors on my own. You can learn a lot that way, so I encourage you to do so, even if you're uncomfortable. great golden color. Now let's pick up a little more water on the brush. Not too much. We just want that brush to be wet, not soaking. We're going to pick up some cad red. And the paints are going on very thin to begin here. Because we're going to want to paint over it. We don't want it to take too long to dry or that paint can, can re-wet in some paints and sometimes pull off a color you just put down. So I like to start thin, dries quick. No need to get ahead of the curve just yet. This is just a nice muted red, kind of orange. Some of it's gonna be covered up, so don't worry about Oh, maybe you went overboard to there. Maybe you're thinking that's too much red. Well, it'll be covered up. But we want to get that color probably more saturated than what we want it to look like in the end because that'll shine through our next layer of paint. So these are going to dry fairly quick, and I'm mainly scrubbing that color on pretty dry. Got a little moisture. I'm going to wash the brush. I'm going to have to grab some more white paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lot of white here. I'm going to grab some black. We're going to make a gray. And then we're going to take some cerulean blue and a little bit of quinacridone red. Kind of a muted violet. Maybe we'll take a little more blue. A little more white. 
want to pull that a little bit towards the grayscale here. So we want a little bit of that color, not a lot. This is more muted. I'm going to go right over the top, that back edge of the red there. And you can take your fingers and kind of blend that out. Or you could grab another brush, put it on. There's a little water in there, moisture. And you could kind of swirl those colors together with a brush. Lots of different ways to blend this. It might look a little blotchy, but it's got to go through an ugly phase to get to the smooth, beautiful phase. So don't worry about it if you're not getting it right away. I'm willing to bet you're closer to finishing it rather than having a maybe a blank white canvas. So you're making steps towards it, just keep it going. I'm trying to mix more of that color, kind of just a little bit of color, a little bit of that violet in there, a little bit of blue. We're going to put some up top here too, but we don't want to connect it and I'll show you why. I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to grab some white, a little bit of cad red, a little bit of yellow, Kind of getting an orange color, very light orange color. And I'm going to mix just a little bit in with that color we have. We're going to put it right in between here. And what that's going to do is separate this up here from this. So it looks like this is in front, this is further back. We've got some light coming through in between. So let's just lighten it for now. We can add, change, do whatever we want with it a little later. But this gets us started. I'm going to go around the white we laid down for the highlights. Just so it appears that that color is all the way through back in there. We might put some more down here. Our only white in the sky is going to be right here and maybe a tad right here. That's really going to draw the focus. So even though the light source is coming from this way, we do want it to be darker. We do want it to be darker than this area. So I'm going to grab more white. And I'm going to grab a little bit of cerulean blue, just a little. Let's just get this color on here. I'll take my fingers, just kind of blend it around. We're mainly just colorizing the canvas. We're not putting a whole lot of paint don't always need to have a thick layer of paint. So this is just, we're almost glazing the white canvas. We just want that color, that indication of that color to be there. We may cover some up. We may leave some. We're going to get it on there. See how that instantly makes this pop. That's what we're going to go for. I'm going to grab a little bit of carbon black, mix it with the white. And we're going to try to mix a little orange. Let's mix the orange over here. Kind of get a lot of that off the brush. Still some on the brush and then we'll mix it in. So that's just not overpowering. Let's put a few clouds. There's kind of random spots. Going around the white, we want to maintain those highlights. All right, and I want to let that dry. 
So that's just a good underpainting. That's how I like to do my underpaintings. That's more or less what it is. And we can fill in more over the top, but for right now, let's leave it just about as is. I'm gonna darken it. I think there's gonna be some darker spots up close here. That white's gonna be broken up just a little bit. So let's just finish that up with just adding a few darker areas around those highlights. Just kind of random spots. Want it to be very random, broken. All right. Let's keep going further down. I'm gonna wash my brush. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to have to grab some more white paint. We're gonna grab white. We're gonna grab some black. Get a good gray over here. And I'm gonna grab a lot of blue and some quinacridone, just little This is a little thicker. We're not gonna to work too high up into our cloud because we do wanna let it dry. I'm gonna start with the bottom. And this area over here is gonna be a little lighter. So I'm gonna take some water on a paper towel. See how we can just adjust that. Get to it before it dries. That's gonna be a little lighter through there, so that's pretty good for now. Maybe the back of our cloud, we could probably work a little bit on that. Get some darker shades in the back. Still leaving those highlights alone for the most part. All right, now let's grab some more cerulean blue, get that even bluer and more black. And while that's still wet, let's just kind of back and forth, just blend some of that in there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to get some indication of some foreground just on there. I'm going to take yellow and black. You're going to get kind of a greenish color. Water that down. And so our tree line is going to be back here somewhere. Let's just kind of blend that into that sky color. Let's grab some more black, get some more black in there. Let's use that for this closer stuff here. We know there's going to be some trees. We're going to be up here. Let's fill that all in with that darker color, just kind of scrubbing that in. I'm going to get some water on my brush. grab some more of that same color. Just want to keep that paint flowing. There's going to be some darker shadows here. So we're basically painting the shadows right now. And we'll add color over the top. Let's get some real dark color right through here. There's going to be some darker shadows through here. 
let's take some cerulean blue. I've got a little black on my brush, but you can mix right in to the blue with that. So just darken that blue down. Let's put a little bit right on the bottom. Then we'll grab some white, some more cerulean blue. lighter blue. Alright, and then I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to pick up some white. And I'm going to pick up a little cad red. Kind of pinkish. Right below that pink in the cloud. I'm just going to get some on right here. I'm going to blend that right into that color down there. It's still wet, so it should blend still. Now this is a little more gray. But that works because it's mostly gray right above here. And we'll blend that a little bit over here. More of that pink color, just kind of get it on there. And I'm going to cover up some of that green through here because it will fade with the sky as well. All right, now it's starting to look good. So let's. Wash our brush again. I'm going to have to grab more white. And we're going to start thinking about these clouds a little more. So I'm just going to go right over with some more white. Try to cover up those, that initial sketch we made. Most of this should be dry by now. And there's even going to be some highlights up on these clouds too. So let's just get something on there. A couple back there. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of yellow. It's got a little bit of that light pink in there too, so I grabbed a little bit of yellow, mix it in with this pink color that we had down here. A little bit lighter, and let's put right behind those highlights. Let's just lighten it up just a little bit. It'll start to look like the sun is actually hitting those clouds. I'm going to grab some more yellow and some cad red, a little more orange, and in circle motions I'm going to start thinking about where the sun is contacting directly, which would be the white areas, and any area where it's not hitting directly, we want some of this yellow to go in there. So I'm going to try to go on the back side of these whites. to get some of this yellow orange color on there just leaving a little bit of white highlight we can hide some highlights maybe back here so now I'm kind of going from the lights to the darks and getting this color in so it's kind of all over the place it starts to blend things together which is good I'm 
kind of swirl some right over the top. This will lighten it. We also want this cloud back here up here to be further. So now we're starting to get just a little bit of warm gray on our brush. There's a little left. If I push kind of hard in circle motions, I can get that off of there on the canvas. And that's just going to lighten this cloud. So we're lightening that shadow. Just scruffing it right over the top. That's pretty dry, not a whole lot of paint. Maybe some up in here too. You see how that pushes that cloud further back. A little down low. And maybe we'll grab some, we'll put some underneath down here. Top of this orange, just so dull that orange red down just a little bit. So that's a good layer, but let's, let's get a little brush, a little water on our brush. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that gray we had that we had mixed for back here. This is just a little bit on there. I want some of these shadows to come up a little bit further. Maybe right there. And then I'm going to grab another brush, dry brush. I'm just going to blend some of those edges out. This is still a little bit rough, but we're getting it closer. That's all that matters. Let's think about what might, what might we have down through here a little more. Let's get some white and some yellow. Let's get some right underneath that cloud. And right underneath that cloud. Maybe a little bit down lower here, not much. A little bit lighter over here too. Now I'm going to wash my brushes and I'm going to start thinking about what we're going to have down in this area. So I've moved to a smaller brush. This is the same brush, just a smaller version. This is a number two by Artist Loft. Just a small scrumbling brush they call it. And we're going to pick up some black and some green again. I'm sorry, some yellow. That'll kind of make a greenish color. Pretty thick. I'm going to start thinking where this tree line is going to be exactly. What might it look like? Trees up higher. So you can see we're building this whole landscape all together at one time rather than working on one thing and going to the next. Because we might not know how completed we are with certain areas, but once we finish some of this, we might think a little differently about some of the areas. Maybe they actually do look finished. So by kind of working everything together, 
again, helps us with that visualization of what we want everything to look like, and that will help you determine if you're done with something or not, especially in the sky right now. I know I need to work on some of it, but other parts, just not sure. So this will help by getting some of this down here a little bit further. So that's gonna be dark, but then we want some highlights. So I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm gonna grab some more yellow. I'm gonna take some yellow and some cad red and some white. I'm gonna mix an orange. We're gonna have some trees with some leaves on them. Probably put a few over here. This is kind of blending in to that color we laid down, which is fine, because this will kind of keep it muted. Might have maybe one right here too. Again, this is just putting an indication of a tree is going to be there. Maybe a little, maybe a bush or something right here. And I might take some more of that color. We might have some grass through here, some reeds. Maybe some through here. This is all kind of that same color. Sun is going to make a lot of things appear more gold. We'll pick up a little bit darker color. This is going to be some of it's going to be shaded. And so right now we've got a pretty good idea of how things are going to look. We want to take, might want to take some blue and some white, a little bit of black, blue, white, and black. We're going to put a little blue back here, a distant hill. And maybe we'll grab some more white with that blue and we'll do another one even further back here. Look like some far distant ridges. Alright, now at this point everything's worked pretty well. We've got a lot of paint going around, a lot of stuff is still wet. I'm mixing some green, some yellow some blue, a little bit of black, darker green. I'm just gonna wrap up a couple areas that might want some taller tree. Maybe there'll be a taller tree right there. Maybe another one right there. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Everything's pretty worked. And like I said, a lot of the paint is still wet. So I'm gonna let all this dry, think about it, and then come back to it in a little bit. Okay, so now that this is all dry, what I wanna do is match the colors that are already on here. So I'm gonna mix the same colors and go through the same process that we've already done. I'm gonna start with the whites and I'm gonna paint some white right over the top. And I'm gonna to continue to do this. This will be the same thing that we did from the beginning. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna smooth out certain areas we're going to intensify or dull some other areas. Might saturate a couple areas a little, little more. We're going to do the same thing. So the next thing we did was we took some yellow. And I'm just going over those yellow areas. So it's a little bit painstaking because we've already done this. But we want to make it look even more realistic. This is where using your fingers can actually help out quite a bit because that dry paint underneath is a great base to blend over. 
So now I'm getting a little bit better response with my fingers. We're able to really glaze some areas and smooth out other areas. And so we're gonna do that. We're gonna grab a little bit of red. Have kind of that pinkish color. I'm gonna put a little bit of that grab some blue, mix that in. We'll grab a little bit of quinacridone. And that's just a little bit too rich. We're going to make some gray. So we want it to be too saturated. We're going to get some gray in there. Just going over those same areas. And you'll notice that things start to really take form when you do this. start to get that result that you were after. But I like how it looks. I don't want to change it too much. I do want to soften out as much as I can in these clouds. Just a little bit right there, tucked away. We'll do a couple more areas over here too. And we can go over this a third time. If there's an area that you get to and you just can't quite get it how you want, again, try to make that one step closer and just let it dry. And we you can go over the same spot doing the same thing as many times as you want. That's kind of the beauty with these fluid acrylics and they just dry fast enough where you can do it rather quick too. Just got to learn to control that paint before it dries. So I'm just going from one spot to the next, just one at a time. I'm trying to move as much as I can though throughout the paint just so we can build it up together. It's like I said before, when you build it up together it really helps you envision where you're going with it. A couple more shadows through here. Maybe just a little bit right underneath the highlights. I want that back edge of this distant cloud to be a little sharper too. We want to be able to see some kind of difference back there. And same with this one, that back edge. Now I'm not too concerned about color yet because we can adjust the color at any point, but the contrast and values are what we really want to watch. We can glaze or we can scrum some color, lighten it at a later time. So I'm just looking at those values. What, what's too dark? What's too light? How can I fix it? I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to work on this area here. So I'm going to grab some blue, grab some quinacridone red, Got a nice violet, a little more blue. 
And we're gonna take some black, some white, got a gray over here. Let's see, that's a little bit darker. It'll work too. Just going right over some of those trees, it'll happen, it just makes things go a little faster. Don't worry about what you put down in the trees at this point. It's just to help you out. Kind of a blue gray, a little bit blue, red. it's a little bit too red. just try to fluff those edges out. We want to work on smoothing out this area so I'm just going to leave the paint on my brush, grab some white, and I'll mix it kind of into that same color down below. It gets us kind of in between and then we can blend that, that darker color. We can just blend it right into it. Bring a little bit up higher. Now the brush is getting to be a little dry. Still putting some color down, so I just kind of work on some other areas that that might work for. Just gonna have to play around. Does it work here? Uh, a little bit. I'll leave it like that. Does it work here? Uh, yeah, I kind of like that. Add a little more. Not much. Leave it fairly light out here. And a couple of these areas. Just kind of blend that out a little bit better. Alright, so that's looking much better. I like the way that that blends near the bottom, but let's let it dry and let's just kind of keep thinking about the foreground. Maybe we want some of that white cloud. I want that to be a little brighter. Let's just add some white through here, just a little bit. I can adjust it later. Yeah, maybe a little bit right here. A little more white. And while we got it, we can just add it up top here too. We're gonna to wanna to add more whites. The whites are the hardest part to get because you want it to be as white as possible. It takes a lot of layers to get it really white. All right, let's take some blue. Now we got some white. And I'm just gonna blend that all out. I want it to be a little bit of blue, not much. We got a little water just to keep it flowing. Get most of that off of there. We're going to blend that into that distant ridge. And even though this is a small bit of that lighter blue, it's going to add just another dimension. It's going to take it to a whole new level in this area. Let's get that blue. Coated really nice. We'll cover a little bit of it off up. And just kind of blend some of that down low. That'll look like it's reflecting in the water just a little bit in the distance. I'm gonna wash the brush. And I'm gonna pull out that smaller version of that brush again. I'm gonna take some white. Get that right above that distant ridge. A little bit rough. And I'm just going to these tiny little areas. And if I think I can fix that area, I just make an attempt to fix it. Attempt to smooth it. Eventually, you'll figure out a really good system for yourself. You just gotta make those small attempts. Can I make that little, little spot right there better? That's all I'm trying to do right now. Just attention to details, that distant, skies might have some light in it. That's pretty good. And 
and just blending out a couple areas that might be able to smooth with this white color. All right, I'm gonna wash the brush there again. Since we got this blue down here, it's not quite dry yet. I'm gonna take a little bit of black. I wanna get most of that off of there. It's just a little bit on the brush. I'm gonna mix it in with that blue. We're gonna to try to make a middle ridge right through there. Now you can definitely see two layers really clearly. That's what we want. And we'll take some more black and blue. This time we'll add some green. Sorry, some yellow. We're gonna pull it towards that green. All right. We're gonna start to fluff out that nearest ridge line right here. We'll add trees over the top, but we just wanna start getting a little more precise that that's gonna be brush right there. And I'll just kinda of keep, it, keep it going all the way across the top. Try to soften that out. I like soft. And we can kinda of use that Maybe add a little bit right through here. And I'm gonna make sure that goes all the way to the edge back here too. Just softening out all those edges. Then I'm going to try to pick up some of that orange color again. So we got yellow and a little bit of red, some white. Just the indication that ah, there's going to be some, maybe some cattails, some grass, something through here. You can see I'm not worried about doing the water, and then layering this over the top. I'm just doing it all together. And I know sometimes we want to have the tendency to want to work back to front. I think if you build it together, just don't finalize that back area, but build it all up together. And you can put those final touches in the back lap first and then move your way forward. But having everything built up together, I can't stress that enough, at least it helps me a lot. So I'm just going right from the top of the horizon here, right down through the landscape with every color. Just want it all to build up at one time. And I'm just looking all over the place as this is building up together. I'm just looking at color and values. Not worried about the detail yet. Let's take some yellow and some red. Get that bright, brighter orange. That tree's gonna be a little brighter. Same with this one over here. A little more precise, still just the idea of a tree being there. No detail. And you can leave it this way too. This makes a pretty cool painting as well. It's all about what you're trying to get out of it, and if you want to leave a tree just like that, and that's that's perfect too. But I like the details, so I just keep going. A little something back there. Maybe there's some more trees back there. Maybe there's something on the ground here. It's kind of scattered. Not out here though. Wash my brush, and I'm gonna look at the water just a little bit. What can we do here? Maybe we can have to take some more white, get it on my palette, 
and some more yellow. So get some yellow here. We're gonna take white. Still has a little yellow on that brush. Get a little bit more. And our yellow areas are up here and up here, so we want some yellow areas to be down here. Just a little bit. This is pretty muted. I don't want that bright, bright yellow. Landscapes have a lot of muted colors. We can intensify some later if we want. It's good to get creative, but I start out pretty light with color saturation. So there, there's a couple waves just right through here. You can see a couple ripples. Not out here though, we're going to leave that right, right by the shore. And I'm kind of going over the work we just did down here too. But that's alright, the more we go back and forth, it's just going to start softening it out even more. Soft is always good. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush again. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and white. I'm going to look for that pink color. I want some moisture in the brush, but I'm pressing some of it out of here. Try that again. A little bit too much water. Pull that red off. I want just a little red on the brush. Mix that in with the white. And look for areas where we might have some red. Maybe right there. Keep it subtle, just a couple spots. Less is more in this case. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush again. And that's a good idea now of what we got going. I'm gonna grab some black and some blue. Kinda look at a couple areas down here that I might need to touch up. Wash my brush again. I'm going to go back to the sky and start doing the same thing over. See how far I need to go this time. I'm going to work on the whites. Just get more white on there. A little thicker now. I know I have a better idea of what and where I want to put this paint. So I can go a little bit thicker. So we got those whites a little brighter. We might grab some white and some red, get that pink. We might put some pink down here a little bit. A couple streaks into that. All right, so now I really like the sky so far. We might not have to do a whole lot. We can touch up a few areas. But if I switch to this is the number six round that I had before when we did our sketch, I'm gonna get some water on it, kind of push that water out of the brush. And I'm gonna start thinking about what details we're actually gonna have now in our tree lines. I'm just gonna get some solid black, 
might add some blue. Just kind of touching up some dark areas, just getting them a little darker. These trees back here are going to have less detail. Just think about some shadows. Where might some shadows be? And we can do that around here. We know this is going to be a tree kind of up higher. We're going to fill that in with black to start with. And then we'll paint highlights over the top of that. Then what we'll do is we'll grab some yellow and orange again. This is going to be thicker. We're going to start thinking about where those leaves will be, how bright they'll be. Got to let that black dry. And we're just adding small details. And then I'll kind of go back and forth with that brush. And then I'll pull out a liner brush here. I have a small liner. I want to add, let's get some white in that mixture. This is a lighter orange. And I'll start taking the liner brush and just kind of adding small little details. We don't want these details to be way back, but maybe some up top here, up front here. And this just gets us started. We can dip it right into the black. Just get a whole bunch of black. That's yeah, got a little bit of that lighter color in. We could start adding shoreline detail, just random detail. Just again, this is just the idea of the detail being there. But we're getting smaller with it. So things will start to take shape. You'll start to see things as you keep adding the small amount of detail. You'll start to see things that come to mind and you'll make one detail and you'll turn it into a rock and you'll make another one and turn it into a stump but just getting this one step closer always helps me just determine again how and, and what I'm going to do as I move forward in the painting it's going to help me visualize what that end result is like I said before so just the idea of more details be some darker colors back here. And maybe we'll grab some red. Got some darker red here. It's got some black and red. Kind of shade some of those trees. Adding shadows to the trees' leaves. And so I'm going to keep doing just this. I'll speed it up and then we'll be almost finished. We're getting really close to something cool here. I don't know how far I'm going to go, but I'm just going to keep doing little details like this. And I might go back to the sky and do the same thing I've done and just soften a couple spots in the sky. But this gets a little bit tedious and it starts to get lengthy. So I'm going to speed it up. But if you have any questions about what I'm doing when I'm speeding it up, please leave it in the comments below. I always do read them. And we'll come back when I'm ready to slow it down.
right, so I'm getting to be pretty happy with what we have so far. And basically what I've done is exactly what I went over. I took that round brush and I tried just to match some of these colors in here, match some of the colors back here, match some of the colors right here. And I would just go back and forth over and over. I did use my finger for some of these areas. And then I switched to a liner brush and I've been basically just poking at it with a liner brush, just trying to add little textures to maybe some of the, the leaves here, added some dead branches. And now I'm to the point where I'm happy with most of it, but we wanna to try to put some final touches on it, really wrap it up. So I've got some white, and the brush I'm using now is a number two round, so it's a little bit larger, and we're gonna be able to hold a little more paint with it. And I've got mostly white with just a tiny bit of yellow. And this is where the paint gets thicker. And I want to try to enhance anything I can with maybe some just some brighter highlights. The thicker the paint, the brighter it's going to it's going to turn out. Just a few details in the water. And I'm going to start going over the whole painting. Just kind of like this. You can see the paint's going on a little bit thicker now. Takes on a little bit different look. I could take some white and some red. We're going to get some pink here. Really get a lot on the brush. I'm going to add some texture to that pink in there. Very subtle, but quite noticeable. And so when we stand back at it, we're not going to see a lot of this, but what I mean by noticeable is when you get up close, you without a doubt can see that extra little difference. That's what kind of makes that realism kind of pop at you is when you have these subtle details that you gotta get close to it to kind of see what's going on. And if we put too much down, we can change it. Never a big deal. So I just keep working. See what this ends up doing. highlights right along the rocks here. Maybe just a couple hiding back here. Press that down, get the paint, and then kind of pull it away. And maybe just a couple right through here too. Wash the brush. Wash it real well. And I'm going to grab just some pure white. I'm just going to go through this area right through here. See that going on really thick, just a few spots here. A lot of that will kind of smooth out as it dries. But just want that to be a little bit brighter. And I can grab some of that pink too. Maybe put a little bit of that pink right through here.
All right. So we are getting very close. I'm to the point where I'm almost ready to wrap this up completely. So I'm just going to poke at a few more details. Sometimes I'll spend a lot of time just kind of thinking about what I'm going to do too. I know it's always hard to finish a painting, especially one this detailed. So it takes a little bit of time, but I'm not going to do anything different. And we are really close. There's just a few things that I think we could adjust. So I'm going to poke at it just like this, and then when I'm finished with it, we'll talk about it at the end. Okay, so this is pretty much wrapped up and I'm beginning to like just about everything and I just thought I'd slow it down just so you can kind of see what I have been doing and just kind of see the few final touches that I am adding to this. This is all I've been basically doing, just looking for areas that oh, maybe I can add an extra couple details and you know what, let's Let's finish with maybe a couple birds way back. I'm going to mix a gray and then I'm going to pick some red and some yellow up. It's great, it can get a warm gray. Super simple. Let's put one. there. Wings coming out. Let's put another one down here.
a couple birds. We could even lighten our one on the left. Just got some white paint. I'm just going to brush that white paint over it and I'm just going to kind of dab it. Dab it a little bit. That'll kind of lighten that. Perfect. You do a little bit to that one as well. We are just about finished. I take a little extra white. Sometimes you can get away with a couple extra highlights. Get a couple bright ones. A couple of wispy clouds in the back. Just break that up a little bit. Highlight on the rocks. And I think I'm just about finished. So I'm going to call that a completed painting. Well, I think that wraps up our painting for today. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you had any questions about the part that I sped up, I'm happy to answer. Just leave them in the comment section below. But the process that we went over essentially stayed the same throughout the whole painting. I just went back over again and then maybe a second time after that. So I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like and share this video if you loved it. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, happy painting.